does seem to me that the evidence, circumstantial evidence, that a group of cyberneticians um, in, in Russia, known as the cyber bears, um, have been involved. So Trump's victory was quite a shock to everyone, but what are the consequences of Trump? Well, the easiest answer is, is we don't know. This guy changes his mind so quickly and backtracks continuously. Um, it seems when he talks to somebody who knows something about the issue, which presumably he didn't in his campaign, uh, then he likes a person he's talking to and he changed his mind. I mean, he had this interview with Obama, which was meant to be 10 minutes, and it went on for an hour. And he changed his mind on Obamacare. Uh, he said, because, uh, you know, right through, we're going to get rid of Obamacare the first day in office. Now he's saying, well, we'll, we'll, we'll keep some of the provisions, for example. Um, we'll keep the young people. And, uh, um, you know, if people are seriously ill, um, uh, they can still apply and so on. So the insurance market is in total chaos. I have no idea what he's going to go, what he's going to do. Immigration, we have no idea what he's going to go. He's going to really originally kick out 11 million people. Now he's going to kick out 3 million people who are there illegally. So the consequences of Trump we don't really know. He switches his mind so quickly. He doesn't really know. He's got no attention to facts. He doesn't read and he listens to people. And uh, you and I could definitely convince him to listen to us. And at the end of it, he totally agree with us. So he does a lot of flip flopping and now his main support, the white working class, now a lot of the promises he made to them, they're being changed. How do they feel? Well, still, of course, uh, very, very supportive because it does seem that evidence is not a great uh, thing that the white working classes have really been looking at, which is kind of a strain. And, and you know, in the, we could say that we're being very nasty so to such people by saying that they're not really listening to facts, but, but they're not. It's kind of bar talk. In fact, Paul Krugman in the New York Times just today said, um, why did white working class vote massively in favor of Trump, but in a sense they're voting against themselves? He's not going to do anything for them. He doesn't know how to, to begin with, no matter what he says. And as you can see, make America great again. What does he mean? But he never said what it meant. Again from when? When, when was it great? Uh, I think probably what he means was make America white again. Now, recently it's been announced that Wisconsin could possibly do a recount of the election votes due to possible hacking. Do you believe that this election could have been hacked by foreign forces? The evidence is, is circumstantial, that the election was, was, was hacked. Um, in fact, there has certainly been very little in the press since November the 8th, election day, I must say, I wrote something on November the 9th with my suspicions of, of hacking of the election by, by the Russians because this book that, that, that I read, The Plot to Hack America by, by Malcolm Nance, which was a, a bestseller, but it came out in October before the American election. I've actually written to him a couple of times to say, what do you think now? And it does seem to me that the evidence circumstantial evidence that a group of cyberneticians um, in, in Russia, known as the cyber bears, um, have been involved. Now, we know that uh, the president of Russia uh, is a cybernetic freak, and he would like to create instability um, around the world as he's done in, in, as we've seen in other parts of the world. I don't want to go into all that right now, but Crimea, I won't mention it, um, nor will I mention Aleppo, and I mention Aleppo. <laughs> uh, but not, really not a funny thing at all. Uh, certainly, there's strong evidence that, according to Malcolm Nance, that the uh, emails and WikiLeaks were, were hacked by the cyber bears. They, they found evidence for that, and that really hurt Clinton. Uh, selective emails, and also some emails were actually doctored 
uh, by third, third parties and to put Clinton into um, a defensive posture. And then, of course, the FBI came up with th something on emails. And this email thing would really, really, really hurt her. Um, but look at the emails. What does it mean? I mean, basically, it's a storm in a teacup. I mean, every Secretary of State before Hillary Clinton would use their own private server for, for emails. She was even advised by Colin Powell that it was okay to do so. And in fact, they couldn't even find anything. And she was found not guilty by, by the FBI. And then they came along with suspicion a week before the election, which really, really, really hurt her. Um, but even then, all the polls showed uh, Hillary ahead, but not very many, that's for sure, by four or five percent. And that uh, on the night of the election, up till about 10 p.m., Hillary was convinced she was going to win. So was everybody, all the commentators and everything, all the polls and everything. And Trump, we heard at 10 o'clock the same night, was convinced he was going to lose. So the tremendous surprise. Now, when things are create tremendous surprises, which is not expected, we can look at them again. You know, maybe it was true. Maybe the majority of people in the United States did vote for Trump. Well, we know the popular vote, no. Uh, Hillary is now over two million votes ahead of Trump on the popular vote. She's also, in fact, in the swing states, moving towards him. She's actually only 30,000 votes away. I mean, that's just one county. Now, is it possible to hack the election process? There are two types of things, processes that go on. One is uh, paper voting. So that's pretty difficult to, to hack. And electronic uh, voting, which those machines are pretty easy to hack, according to Edward Snowden and all sorts of other people. But the main issue is that when they're aggregated, the votes, that's the point at which... Uh, spyware can be hacked and entered and, the, and the, the totals changed. Remember that on election night, I don't know if you're watching, but um, I think it was 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the United States, which is where I was in Africa at the time, it was 4 or 5 in the morning. Um, but within seconds of the voting stopping, we got the results for the whole state. Now, how did they do that? Obviously, that was done electronically because amalgamating all the various uh, counties to bring them to an aggregate vote. So it was possible to do that. And Malcolm Nance describes how that could be done. We've also since found out that in some of the swing states, Wisconsin especially, that uh, electronic voting gave uh, Trump 10 to 15 percent advantages, whereas paper voting, only 1%. So again, no proof, we don't know, maybe, but the circumstantial evidence looks, I think, quite strong. And not just in Wisconsin, Michigan is total, totally paper voting, as far as I remember. And uh, uh, there are appeals going on against us by a lady called Jill Stein, who's actually um, looking for money because you need money as in the States to do anything and you need money to actually audit the polls. So you can do simple audits, but actually going into computer software and checking whether there's some code in there or it's a backdoor or there's a trap or whatever. So what, what's going to happen? Um, we don't know. Clinton herself has really kept out of it. And there was no discussion of the hacking of the election until about two or three days ago. Yes, I'm biased. I don't like Trump in any way whatsoever. So you could say it's colored my views. And as I said, it's circumstantial evidence. But I'm pretty convinced that there was some messing around with it. And in pretty small numbers, it didn't have to do very much. Of course, a priori, they didn't know it was going to be close. But we're talking 30,000 votes now. And it could, the, the total could, could reduce even further as the counting gets. Because what they do, they only count um, the, the majority of votes and then they project it forward. So I think they'll do 95% of the votes. And then there's a few counties which have not voted and they have to check them and all sorts of things. And they're just gradually coming in. Um, so in fact, even then, it could be that Clinton has won Michigan or, or Wisconsin 
Well, thank you, Michael, for speaking with us today on this very interesting topic. It's been a pleasure, and sorry that it's been uh, much more serious than, than usual, but these are not humorous times. These are deadly, deadly serious times, and a lot of us are really, really, really worried. So thank you for allowing me to come and discuss with you these issues. And thank you at home for watching. Don't forget you can click on our YouTube channel to catch previous interviews with myself and Michael. Goodbye for now. Thank you.